Good evening and welcome to News at 6. I am Vishal Dahiya. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley indicates significant reform steps in the offering for railways in the union budget. Says passengers must pay for services they get. Government allays concerns on currency crunch. Jaitley clarifies that any amount of old currency can be deposited in one attempt. Punjab's ruling coalition of BJP and Akali Dal scores landslide victory in Chandigarh municipal elections. BJP chief Amit Shah calls it a people's vote for demonetization. And India scripts a sensational innings victory against England in the fifth test. Ravindra Jadeja takes seven wickets to help the team wrap up the series 4-0. Let's take a look at the news in detail now. First up, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Tuesday asserted that Reserve Bank of India has sufficient stock of cash which would last way beyond December 30th. Jaitley also clarified that any amount of old currency in position can be deposited in one go. Meanwhile, RBI research report has pointed out that the cash crunch is likely to end only by end of February. Refuting charges of ill preparedness, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley asserted on Tuesday that the RBI was adequately equipped for demonetization. He said the RBI is releasing adequate cash to banks every day. Following the RBI's new rules on depositing old currency, Jaitley stressed that since all transactions and exemptions had been lifted, it is logical to deposit the remaining cash in banks in one go. However, he warned that repeated deposits may provoke queries. Up to 30th, you can everybody can deposit his old currency. Now there is no scope further for earning old currency because all exemptions have been phased out. Referring to the arrests of the two Axis Bank managers by the Enforcement Directorate on charges of money laundering and illegally converting old notes, Jaitley assured that the government will take appropriate action in all such cases. जिस बैंक का बार-बार नाम आया एक्सिस बैंक उसकी चेयरपर्सन्स ने पूरी डिटेल दी गई हैं कि बैंक ने भी अपने ऑफिसर्स को कईयों को आईडेंटिफाई किया है जिन्होंने जिनको इन्वेस्टिगेटिव एजेंसीज नहीं पकड़ पाई थी और ट्रांजिएंट पीरियड में उनको सस्पेंड भी कर दिया है the finance minister also announced that small traders and businessmen with a turnover of up to 2 crore rupees without proper accounts will be presumed to have earned 8% income or profit for tax purposes. But if they use digital modes of payments, their income will now be presumed to be 6% of the turnover. The finance minister also held a pre-budget meeting with bank chief executives, heads of financial institutions and NBFCs on Tuesday. Bankers discussed their budget wish list with the government, including scope for further capital infusion. Shruti Mishra, Radha Sabha TV. The Finance Minister also presented the roadmap for the Indian Railways today. Jaitley insisted that instead of populist measures, the railways must focus on improving its performance. The union budget that Jaitley will present this year will include the rail budget for the first time in Indian history. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Tuesday indicated that the government will resist populist measures and focus on improving railway station infrastructure. Speaking at a conference on accounting reforms in railways, organized by the industry body CII, he said that the government will look to monetize railway assets for commercial activities and outsource train hospitality. Jaitley also stressed that consumers must pay for services they receive. Populism requires that I require consumers not to pay for the services that they receive. And therefore any establishment will start crumbling under its own weight and its own contradictions. And the second yardstick was that how many populist announcements we can make without any intention to honour those assign announcements. Meanwhile, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu asserted that accounting reforms coupled with accountability will have a huge impact on productivity of the Indian Railways. That we are not been maintaining accounts to display something what was the desired outcome of that particular expenditure and whether we have been able to reach to that destination or not. At present, the Indian Railways is recovering 57% of the travel cost on passenger tickets, which means 
If that 100 rupees is spent on a train journey, only 57 rupees is recovered from passengers, while the rest is spent on them as subsidy. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. The Tirpur Assembly on Monday witnessed a bizarre scene as TMC MLA Sudeep Roy ran away with the Speaker's mace, stalling Leslie to business. The incident happened during zero hour when members were debating the alleged womanizing issue involving ruling CPM leaders. All of a sudden, TMC MLA Sudeep Roy Berman seized the Speaker's mace and ran out with it, abruptly bringing House proceedings to a halt. When the House reassembled, the Speaker condemned the act and said it was against parliamentary practices and procedure. The Congress and Trimul Congress members were protesting against personal allegations related to Forest Minister Naresh Jamatia. However, Jamatia has refused the charges published in a lo local newspaper, calling them baseless. At this period, Speaker can suspend him also. But it is the last day of our session. Speaker politely says, you take it. I warn you. And with you, warn all the other MLAs also, one should do this job again. If any uh, things come again, I can take a stunt action to make the purity of the assembly. India once again cornered Pakistan at an international platform raising the issue of terrorism. Addressing the United Nations Security Council, India's envoy to UN, Syed Akbaruddin, said there was an urgent need to address the issue of backing Kiv's outfits like Haqqani Network, LET and JEM by their shadowy supporters outside Afghanistan. In another warning to Pakistan over providing safe havens to terror groups, India on Tuesday urged the international community to address the issue of Pakistan backing terror outfits like LAT and the Jaish e Mohammed. Addressing a United Nations Security Council session on the situation in Afghanistan, India's envoy Sayyid Akbaruddin, without naming Pakistan, said to bring sustainable peace to Afghanistan, groups perpetrating violence in the country must be denied safe havens in its neighborhood. We need to address as an imperative the support that terrorist organizations like the Taliban, Haqqani Network, Daesh, Al-Qaeda and its designated affiliates such as Lashkar-e-Toiba and the jaish e Mohammed, which operate entirely outside the fabric of international law, draw from their shadowy supporters outside Afghanistan. The Indian envoy emphasized that the international community must introspect about the way it was approaching the situation in Afghanistan and whether there was need for course correction. We need to ask ourselves whether what we are working on in Afghanistan is the wrong thing to be working on or whether we are working on it in the wrong way. Since we all agree that supporting the people of Afghanistan is not the wrong thing, then the questions we need to ask ourselves should be related to our ways of going about it. Meanwhile, reports say that India, along with Bangladesh and Iran, have pulled out of a key regional conference on sustainable development which is being held in Pakistan. The three-day session started in Islamabad on Monday. India had earlier boycotted the SARC summit that was to be held in Islamabad. The animosity between India and Pakistan has increased ever since the terror attack on the Pathan Court Air Base in January. Pakistan has violated the ceasefire more than 300 times since India conducted surgical strikes in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir in September. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In an attempt to strengthen relations with Central Asian countries, India and Kyrgyzstan today agreed to cooperate on fighting terrorism. Both nations also signed six agreements in various fields, including defense and economic development. Kyrgyzstan is an important country in Central Asia with huge natural resources and a good stock of hydrocarbons. It is also a part of Eurasian zone and a member of the major regional grouping SCO. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President of Kyrgyzstan Almaz Beg Atambayev held summit level meeting on Tuesday to discuss issues of convergence. They also discussed measures to increase trade and development partnerships between the two countries. Six agreements were signed in the presence of the two leaders in the fields of tourism, agriculture and food industry, youth development, among others. 
Work was also initiated on a bilateral investment treaty. President Atambayo and I agreed on the need to connect our economies more deeply. To this end, we will work to strengthen bilateral trade and economic linkages and facilitate greater people-to-people -people exchanges. We will encourage industry and business on both sides to play a leading role in exploiting opportunities. Cooperation in defense and security with a focus on combating terrorism was also discussed in detail. Both countries will hold joint military exercises next year on counter-terrorism as well as establish the Kyrgyz-India Joint Military Training Center in Kyrgyzstan. We also discuss how we could work together to secure our youth and society against the common challenges of terrorism, extremism, and radicalism. We agreed on the need to coordinate and work closely in addressing and overcoming these challenges for our common benefit. Although Kyrgyzstan is interested in developing a close trade partnership with India, the lack of land connectivity is a major impediment for India to catch up with China in the region. However, both countries are keen to work together to use the Chabahar port route for logistical reasons. Pakistan is not inclined to give their land route to India for Central Asia and China is building roads to connect with Kyrgyzstan, putting a challenge to India for all practical purposes. Earlier, the visiting president was given a ceremonial welcome at the Prashtrapati Bhavan. He also met President Pranam Mukherjee and Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari. Situated at the western border of China, Kyrgyzstan is very important strategically for India. And Kyrgyz people too don't want to be dependent only on China for their development needs. Akhile Soman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person DK Pandey in Delhi. Let's now take a look at some more news and updates from across the country in Nationwide. Punjab's ruling coalition of BJP and Akali Dal scored a landslide win in the municipal elections in capital Chandigarh. The allies won 21 of the 26 seats, with 20 seats going to the BJP, while the Congress settled for just four, while one seat went to an independent candidate. Today's result is the biggest ever victory for any single political party in the body since its inception in 1996. BJP chief Amit Shah called it a people's vote for the note ban, adding that his party had won every election after the centre's demonetization step. A fire broke out on the 22nd floor of the multi-storied Air India building in Mumbai's Nariman Point. There has been no reports of any casualties or injuries. At least eight fire engines and seven water tankers were rushed to douse the fire. However, it was a minor fire that broke out, clarified an Air India official, but damage assessment is yet to be done. Kashmir Valley was in the grip of a cold wave ahead of the onset of Chilai Kala, which marks the beginning of the 40-day winter period. Harsh weather has led to freezing of water supply lines as well as water bodies, including the Dal Lake. Srinagar recorded a low of minus 5.5 degrees Celsius last night, down over a degree from the previous night, nights minus 4.2 degrees Celsius. This is the lowest night temperature the city has experienced so far in this winter. Seven Tamil Nadu fishermen from Kottai Patanam in Tamil Nadu were arrested by Sri Lankan Navy early Tuesday. Fishermen were reportedly poaching in Sri Lankan waters. The arrested fishermen will be produced before a Jaffna court soon. Let's take a break here. maternity benefit uh, law. People have said that, you know, it caters only to the women in the, in the formal sector. We are talking about women in formal employment. How do you cater to somebody who is not employed? 
Can the political class really prohibit themselves from treating women as a vote bank? And nobody can treat anybody as a vote bank unless you want to be treated as a vote bank. Do you also feel suffocated at times in politics? Probably that you're not able to no. do what you think? Because I do exactly what I want to do. And you're allowed to do that? No, I, nobody has to allow me. Watch to the point with Women and Child Development Minister Menika Gandhi only on Rajya Sabha Television. Gyan Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue, symbolized by the ladders, rewarded, while the vices shown by the snakes are punished. Each square in turn also narrates a message of wisdom. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some international news now. Turkish authorities detained six people for the assassination of the Russian ambassador to Ankara as Russia urged urgently sought answers over the murder. Russian President Vladimir Putin declared that it was imperative for the country to know who was behind the murder. Russian a Russian investigative team has arrived in Turkey to probe the murder. Russian ambassador Andrei Karlov died after an off-duty police officer shouting, Don't forget Aleppo, shot him in the back as he gave a speech at an Ankara art gallery on Monday. The US is keeping its embassy in Ankara and its Consulates in Istanbul and Adna closed for normal operations on Tuesday. This after an individual approached the embassy and fired gunshots. Security has been heightened around the Iranian embassy and the Russian embassy as well. Iran is a close ally of Russia in the Syrian conflict where both sides support the government of President Bashar al-Assad. <laughs> Tapirmanitivan, Russian ambassador Andrei Karlov was shot four times in the back as he opened an exhibition of Russian photography in Ankara. The killer was a 22-year-old police officer who had worked for Ankara's anti-riot police for the last two and a half years. German police are now investigating the truck attack at the Berlin Christmas market as a terror attack. It is suspected that the man driving the truck had stolen it and killed its original Polish driver. The suspect is a Pakistani asylum seeker who arrived in Germany in February as a refugee. Germany's opposition blamed Chancellor Angela Merkel for the attack linking it to her open-door migration policy, which saw the arrival of more than one million people last year. Meine Damen und Herren, dies ist ein sehr schwerer Tag. Ich bin wie Millionen von Menschen in Deutschland entsetzt, erschüttert und tief traurig über das, was gestern Abend am Berliner Breitscheidplatz geschehen ist. German Chancellor Angela Merkel echoing the feelings of an entire nation. Germany is now treating the Berlin truck attack as a terror attack by someone who sought asylum in the very country where he caused mayhem. The suspected driver of the truck that ploughed into the Berlin Christmas market killing 12 has been identified as a 23-year-old migrant from Pakistan. The suspect arrived in Germany in February and was known to police for minor offences and used several names. Noch wissen wir vieles über diese Tat nicht mit der nötigen Gewissheit. Aber wir müssen nach jetzigem Stand von einem terroristischen Anschlag ausgehen. 
Ich weiß, dass es für uns alle besonders schwer zu ertragen wäre, wenn sich bestätigen würde, dass ein Mensch diese Tat begangen hat, der in Deutschland um Schutz und Asyl gebeten hat. Dies wäre besonders widerwärtig. The truck is owned by a Polish company and appears to have been driven across the border for the attack. The owner of the truck company says it may have been hijacked. To jest taki kierowca, za którego ja daję rękę nogę. To ja powiem panu, mój scenariusz, jaki ja widzę teraz na tą chwilę, to jest tak, że jemu po prostu coś tam zrobili, tak, porwali ten samochód, bo był blisko. Police say the truck was steered deliberately into the crowd and was carrying 25 tons of steel at the time. It has since been removed. Überall standen Menschen, liefen lang, haben sich was zu essen geholt, wie es halt auf dem Weihnachtsmarkt ist. So, und in dem Moment muss der durchgerauscht sein. Ich habe ein lautes Geräusch gehört und dann bin ich zu Boden gerissen worden. Mehr weiß ich, habe ich auch nicht gesehen, dadurch, dass ich da, wie gesagt, begraben war. Und dann lagen halt ganz viele Menschen. Tributes have poured in from across the world for the victims of the attack. US President-elect Donald Trump has linked the incident to Islamic State and other Islamist terrorists and global jihad. The French have expressed solidarity with Germany, while Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif condemned the attack. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Chinese government today reportedly returned an underwater U.S. drone it seized last week in the South China Sea. The drone was handed over some 92 kilometers northeast of Subic Bay in the Philippines. The move came after the United States criticized the seizure, calling it unlawful. The Pentagon said the U.S. would continue to investigate the incident. It also added that it will continue to fly, sail and operate in the South China Sea, where international law allows. However, China has described U.S.'s criticism of the drone issue unreasonable. The Chinese Navy ship seized the drone on December 15 in international waters of Philippines. Now,经过核查认定这是美方的无人潜航器之后呢，中方决定通过适当的方式移交美方。那么根据我的了解，我刚才也提到了，中美双方呢正在通过两军的渠道保持着。Let's take a look at some important and interesting stories in Global Watch. A gunman who wounded three people attending prayers after opening fire at an Islamic center in Zurich has been found dead. The attacker opened fire on Monday evening at Somali Islamic Center close to Zurich station. A body and a gun were later spotted under a bridge a few streets away. Police confirmed it was the attacker. Former Pakistan President General Parvej Musharraf has revealed that ex-Army Chief General Rahil Sharif helped him leave the country by keeping the government from pressuring the courts. The statement came weeks after General Sharif retired in November after completing the three-year tenure. Musharraf was able to fly out of Pakistan in March this year after the Interior Ministry issued a notification to remove his name from the exit control list. An Indonesian court will decide next week whether to push forward with a controversial blasphemy trial of Jakarta's Christian governor who is accused of insulting the Quran. A judge told the hearing on Tuesday. Meanwhile, protesters stood outside the Jakarta court calling for jailing of the accused governor. An ethnic Chinese Christian has allegedly insulted the Quran. The hearing is to presume on December 27th. In cricket, Ravindra Jadeja secured seven wickets on the final day of the fifth test, scripting a sensational win for India, as they defeated England by an innings and 75 runs to finish the series with a 4-0 victory. Resuming the day at 12 for no loss, England started cautiously and did not lose any wickets in the morning season. But Jadeja triggered a collapse claiming the wicket of captain Alistair Cook 
as England slipped to 167 for four at tee. The last session saw England lose their last six wickets for just 15 runs as they slipped to their eighth test defeat of this year. Jadeja finished with 10 wickets in the match. India scored their highest test score of 759 at the loss of seven wickets in their first innings to leave the visitors trailing by 282 runs. Triple centurion Karuna Nair was named man of the match while Indian captain Virat Kohli was named player of the series. This was India's fifth successive series win since September 2015. That's all in today's News at 6. Keep watching Rajasabha Television.